With lots of earnings, so let's address another set. Uh, we've got on board with us Deepak Asher, Director and Group Head at Ionox Leisure, joining us on the show right now. Deepak, hi, morning. Your profits have dipped in the fourth quarter, where the other parameters have been healthy. Uh, what would you say attributed and went by in the quarter? If you look at a broader or a larger view, 2019, I think, has been a sterling year for Ionox. Our key performance indicators on several parameters have shown not just spectacular but unprecedented performance. We have demonstrated what might be the largest footfall achieved by us ever, the highest ticket price achieved by us ever, the highest spent per head on food achieved by us ever, the highest advertising revenues achieved by us ever, the highest revenues, the highest EBITDA and the highest profitability achieved by us ever for the full year. Uh, <coughs> EBITDA has grown by more than 50% from 210 crores to 309 crores. Net profit has grown by more than 100% from 61 crores to 129 crores. And this has been because of the investments that we made in, in new screens and on the existing screens in technology, in service, in luxury, in convenience to customers has all paid rich dividends. So we, we believe we have uh, shown significant improvement in all operating, operating parameters that has led to a significantly healthier top line as well as bottom line. On the other hand, the screen additions that we have achieved this year are not just the highest that we have ever achieved, but these are the highest screen additions achieved by any multiplex chain in the country ever. 85 screens added during the year translates to almost one screen opening every four days. This represents about 40% of the screen additions achieved by the entire industry and based on the pipeline that we have going forward and the extremely strong balance sheet that we have, we believe we will be able to maintain this momentum of growth going forward as well. Okay, uh, your operational performance has been healthy. Do you think that this kind of a margin growth is sustainable for you? Yes, we do believe, as I said, that the investments that we made in the new screen openings as well as the improving the operating parameters on, on the existing screens will lead to revenue numbers and profitability numbers which are not just strong but also sustainable and scalable. So we believe we should be able to maintain this momentum of growth going forward as well. Currently, FNB revenue contributes about 26% to total revenue. How have your uh, FNB revenues been in Q4 and what's the output? So, if you look at the full year, and I have my numbers for the full year in front of me, the spent per head on food and beverages improved from 66 rupees per patron in 2018 till about 74 rupees per patron in 2019. That's a growth of 11%. You know, we've done several things in order to improve our food and beverage uh, revenues. We've, uh, we've introduced very, very vibrant menus. We've had live kitchens in many of our properties. We've introduced items on the menus which are theme oriented. So if it's a new film that is getting released or there's a local festival or, or you know, regional content which is coming up, the menus are based on themes which are based around that content. Uh, we increase the point of sale for our food items. We provide a lot of convenience for our customers to be able to order food from the comfort of his home or the comfort of his seat when he's within our plex, apart from the fact that we have queue busters across our properties. And all this has led to a significant improvement in food and beverage revenues. We've also seen the highest yearly ATP at uh, about uh, 197. What's the outlook on ticket prices and also spends per head? Yes, uh, but before that, I'd just like to do a minor kind of course correction. The, the improvement in ticket prices could potentially have been better. It currently is at from 193 rupees going up to 197 rupees, which shows a 2% kind of growth. But this is after considering the fact that with the reduction in GST from 28% to 18%, and this benefit of reduced GST was passed on to the consumer, our average ticket price actually went down. And therefore, this 2% increase reflects the reduction in ticket prices uh, after the GST reduction. So I did not move for that. I think we'll be able to maintain uh, 5 to 7% growth in average ticket prices as we have been maintaining historically. Mr. Asha, now you have seen Inox, which has been very aggressive when it comes to screen additions. You've added 71 screens this year. What is the outlook? Are you on track with your screen addition plan? Are you even looking to increase your penetration into the tier 2 and 3 cities? 
Yes, uh, I think the industry is horribly underscreened. We have less than three screens per million population in India. Uh, for a country for whom the primary form of entertainment is cinema watching, I think there is room for a lot more screens. So we are looking at not just tier 2, tier 3, but we believe even in tier 1 towns and cities, there are going to be significant scope for growth. We ourselves have signed up properties uh, equivalent to about 850 screens. Now this obviously is not all happening in the next one or two years, this is going to take time to implement, but we have a committed pipeline of about 850 screens of which in addition to the 85 screens that we opened last year, which is FY19, we expect in this year FY20 to be able to open around 80 screens this year as well. Are you worried about competition from OTT players because they're upping their offering? Is that a concern and what is the strategy to take them on? Uh, you know, do you in any way see your market share being impacted? We don't believe OTT really competes with cinema because, you know, cinema out of home entertainment is something that has always been in vogue in India. It is all the more, you know, the cinema going culture is, is all the more ingrained in the habits of uh, the youth as well as family audiences. So we believe regardless of what happens on OTT, people will still want to go out to see a movie in a cinema theatre and enjoy the entire experience of an out of, out of home entertainment. Right. Is there a strategy in place to expand businesses by acquiring smaller multiplex chains? Uh, and, and what are the you know, other projects and acquisitions that you may have in the pipeline? Well, you know, we've never been averse to acquisition opportunities. We've always been uh, looking out for them. Uh, 